Welcome guys to another lighting tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to set up uh, different shots outside. The example I'm going to be showing is for an interview, but uh, this same techniques can be applied to any kind of shot you're doing outside uh, where you want to add a little bit of lighting to enhance your shot. Uh, this is also going to build on top of the previous lighting tutorial I did where I show you guys how I use shadows to build uh, extra dimension and add depth to your shots. And also make sure you guys stay till the end where I'm going to show you uh, how you can do this with very minimal lighting equipment or actually you can do it without any lights, uh, just purely using natural light. So this shot that I'm setting up uh, in this tutorial is actually shot on the Blackmagic Packet 6K camera. Uh, and I'm using the 50 millimeter lens. Now you can be using any kind of lens you want. First, I would say before you begin to even do any kind of lighting, figure out more or less where your camera angle is going to be, where your subject is going to be, uh, you know, what's it, what's in the background. For me, I wanted to make sure I have some kind of nice looking vegetation there behind our subject. Uh, but again, this can be done anywhere outside. It could be an urban setting. Just remember that wherever it is that you're setting up your shot, uh, always kind of make sure that you're aware of what's in the foreground, but also what's in the background of your shot. And this is going to become very uh, important in the later portion of this tutorial. So this is how our scene looks without any lights and obviously it looks ugly, boring uh, and our subject looks uh, underexposed and that's because uh, I actually have my subject in the shadow whereas the background of the, the vegetation is uh, in, uh, out in full sunlight. Now why would you want to place your subject in a shadow? Uh, well you want to do it for various reasons but number one I would say is because this way you can fully control the lighting uh, and especially when you're going to take some time to set up the shadow maybe you might want to do a few different angles of your scene and you don't want the sun to be moving uh, basically throughout your shot you want to have kind of constant lighting so the first thing you want to do is you want to either pick a spot that's somewhere in the shadow so the sun is not directly hitting your subject or you can easily create a shadow by putting a flag on a stand uh, or maybe like a large uh, diffusion screen material that is going to soften and kind of diminish the sunlight in our case, I just put the subject in the shadow of the building that we have next to us. Now, like I said, our subject is underexposed because I've adjusted the camera's exposure uh, to correctly expose the background there, which is, again, fully lit by the sun, and it's, it's something that I really can't control. I can't control the intensity of the, of the light on that. Uh, but I can obviously control the intensity and also the angle of the light that's going to fall on our subject. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, put in my key light. In this case, I'm going to use the Aperture 300D light. I'm using the first version of this light. It's still an amazing light. And this is something I will actually give you guys like a kind of a quick tip. Uh, whenever you're investing in lighting gear, like these really nice lights that Aperture produces, uh, it doesn't mean that you always have to go and buy out the latest version. Because, yes, the latest version of, of for example, the, the Aperture 300D, it has some nice improvements but because as you can see i'm still using the older version uh, it works great and you can actually pick this uh, older version right now for a lot cheaper uh, whether it's on ebay or on other places uh, because again the newer version is the one that most people want so do yourself a favor sometimes and save save a few bucks and uh, i know there were a few people worried about uh, the aperture 300d the first version at least having problems with some weird green color cast well uh, rest assured you guys can easily fix that because aperture actually released uh, a quick little filter that you can uh, easily swap out yourself and that will fix any light shifting issues to, that the original version of the 300d had so the 300d from aperture uh, which is going to be my key light here is a great light overall but uh, i don't want to just use it you know by itself i want to actually diffuse this light especially for a key light because i want kind of softer more diffused shadows and just kind of more even kind of illumination uh, all across the, the face of our subject so what i'm going to put is this giant uh, softbox and it's actually also from aperture uh, called the light dome and now I'm going to position this whole light uh, at the right angle to our subject. Now, which angle should you position this light? Well, I think for that you guys should watch my previous lighting tutorial where, again, I talk about how I used shadows to add dimension uh, to, your, to your shots. But in here I'm kind of putting the light uh, a little bit off to the subject's right side uh, and a little bit higher than their uh, eye line. And right away the shot looks a lot better with just having that one key light uh, in there. 
Now the next problem that I right away recognize is that our subject's left side, whether it's their shoulder or their head, uh, is kind of because it's in the shadows, it kind of blends in with the background because that portion of the background is uh, a little bit dark. So another good tip is to add some kind of an edge or hair light, basically a light that you're gonna uh, light from behind our subject uh, to kind of illuminate that darker side of your subject so it helps kind of separate it from the background. In this case I'm using another uh, aperture light, this is the 120D, but with this light instead of putting a softbox on it I actually used uh, the uh, Fresnel light that again Aperture produces. It's actually a really good attachment with a Bowens mount so it's going to work with a lot of different lights and including this 120D and what this essentially does is it helps you kind of focus the light and uh, essentially in a way increase the intensity because you can focus it on one area uh, of your scene. And as you can see right away with that edge light it just our scene becomes a lot more three-dimensional and our subject definitely stands out from that darker portion of the background. Now another thing you might want to do is to add a third light to fill in your shadows. Uh, in this case we're actually outside and we have so much bounce light that our, the shadows are not overly dramatic or too dark uh, like they were in my previous tutorial so it's not really necessary. And this will actually take me to the next part of this tutorial because uh, I actually had one of the viewers on my previous video ask me whether we always need to use the kind of a traditional three-point lighting or three lights in our shots and the answer is no a lot of times you can actually just use one light and that's usually going to be your key light so in this case if i were for example to not use the background light but just the key light then again this is how the shot looks and overall i'm happy with the shot and in a way I would even say it looks more natural. So that's another uh, maybe thing you want to ask yourself is what kind of style of cinematography do you want in your final shots? Because if you want your shots to look very stylized and very kind of produced uh, and, and high polished almost I would say, then uh, you definitely would want to add a lot of these kind of edge lights that are gonna highlight your subject and, and, and maybe even fill lights and things like that. But for example, if you're going for a more natural look, uh, then you definitely want to stay away from very strong or noticeable uh, edge lights or hair lights and especially when they're not justified in your scene. Let's say there are no natural lights like in the sun or some practicals in your scene uh, that kind of look like they're lighting your subject from behind and in that case uh, putting instead of an artificial light there just to add that edge light is again going to look very set up or produced and in a natural lighting setup I would definitely say you want to stay away from that. But then of course we have that problem that we had before which is that now our subject maybe looks good but it kind of happens to blend in with the dark portion of the of our background. And that's going to take me to the next step of the tutorial which is you always want to be aware of exactly what's in behind your subject. So the background even if it's really out of focus like in, it is in this case uh, you really still want to be aware of what's there and especially when it comes to colors and the, the brightness levels. Uh, and so you, we can easily fix our uh, shot right here like I said, either by adding an edge light, but if you want to go for that natural look, we can do it without adding any lights, just by simply kind of rotating our scene a little bit. So in this case, I adjust the angle slightly of my camera to the right, and I of course do the same thing with the key light, and now suddenly our subject is standing against a much brighter background, and definitely there over the left side or the left shoulder. And this right away means that our subject is no longer blending in with the background. And of course you can do the same kind of things uh, if you're shooting indoors. Again, if you want more kind of a natural look, you can do that just simply by placing uh, some kind of an object or a lamp uh, that maybe will look like it's actually a part of the scene there and can also, also brighten up your background and just kind of help uh, separate again your subjects from the dark backgrounds. Uh, so as you guys can see in the tutorial, you can definitely uh, set up your scenes and make them look really good just by using one light, so you don't always have to have three lights. Like I said, sometimes you might want to use one, sometimes two, sometimes three. Depends on the style of photography you want and on what kind of what your scene looks like. Now, what if you wanted to do a similar shot, but let's say you have no lights whatsoever. Can you still light it and make it look good? 
Yes, you can. And I actually have a whole set of 12 different lighting tutorials uh, on my website where I show you guys how I achieve all these different kinds of setups without using any lights, just using the natural light, which in most cases means using the sun. Like for example in this shot here, where I use the sun as our backlight, so it's kind of a backlighting and providing a nice separation to our subject. And I used another reflector to provide nice fill on our subject. And in my tutorial I even show you guys exactly what camera settings, lens settings uh, I had, why, and even how I did the color grading uh, to achieve this final effect. So if you guys want to check out these tutorials where I show you how I set up these 12 different uh, shots without using any lights, then again, head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys really enjoyed it and found it uh, educational. If you did, make sure you hit that uh, like button and share it uh, with others that you think might uh, find this useful. But even more importantly, if you want to stay on top of all these lighting tutorials and film gear reviews and other filmmaking uh, content that I put out, then make sure you subscribe to my newsletter on my website, uh, which is again tomantosfilms.com, where uh, also you guys are going to be notified of really cool different camera games and all other, other kind of filmmaking gear giveaways that I always do there. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.